In today's video, we'll take a look at how to build this ODP verification screen using Flutter. I'm not only going to show you how to build the UI for the screen, but also how to build the validation logic so that when the user inputs a OTP, that it confirms if it's the correct OTP, otherwise if they enter the wrong OTP, then it says that the pin was incorrect. So to get going, the only package that we're going to be using to actually develop this page is going to be the pin input package. And we're going to be using this to actually implement the input, which is going to allow us to input the pin within it and then perform some validation logic on it. So this is an awesome package that is available on pub.dev. So let's copy the pin input package, come back, go to our pubspec.yaml file, come to where the dependency section is, and then I'm going to paste it in. And then I'm just going to wait for Flutter Pub get to do its magic and download the package. And after that, I am going to give a quick run to my actual application, which is a bare bones Flutter application. And once it's running on the simulator, then I will resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So as you can see, the application is now running on the simulator, so we can actually begin the coding process. What I've done is created an empty stateful widget that I'm going to call home page and for its build function, it currently just returns a scaffold. And then on my main.dart file, I've basically set to the build functions, material apps, home property, this home page widget that I've created. So all of the logic is going to go within the home page. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is basically creating a variable. And this variable is going to keep a reference to what the correct pin is going to be when the user is going to be inputting a pin, the pin that we're going to be comparing against the, what the valid pin is going to be. So in this case, I will do string valid pin, and then I'll set it equal to one, two, three, four. You could use whatever pin that you'd like, but the assumption here is that this valid pin is going to be something that you'll fetch from a backend or from an API, something like that, but I'm just hard coding it in. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is for now just defining the init state function for this class because we're going to be using this to initialize some variables later on. Now that this is done, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is basically laying out the structure of our UI. So this includes adding the stuff at the top, which is the text for verification, the subheading under that and the phone number. After that, we'll have the actual UI for inputting the actual user's pin. And then after that, we'll have this hyperlink text, which will say didn't get the code, we can resend it. So how can we do that? Well, to do that, I am going to come to my build function and for the scaffold, I'm going to define its body property and then I'm going to say that I'll do a call to a function called build UI. Once this is done, then what I'm going to be doing is basically defining a function underscore build UI returns a widget. And then within this, I'm going to say that we are going to return a safe area widget. Then the child for this is going to be a sized box dot expand widget and the child for that is going to be a column widget and the column is going to have a children list which for now is going to be empty and after that I'm going to add the semicolon at the end and do command save and hopefully everything should work as intended and we have no errors. So from here, what I'm now going to be doing is focusing on the top part of the UI first. So this is the text that we see at the top. So for this, I'm just going to copy and paste the code in quickly because this isn't anything that's too complicated. And what we're basically doing is adding a column as the first child within our children's list within our column. And then we're going to have a children's list for this as well. And here I am firstly going to be adding the heading text. So to actually render the heading text, what I am going to be doing is actually creating a function which is going to be responsible for returning the widget of the heading test. So I'll say there's going to be a function, it's going to be underscore heading text, I'll open up the functions body, and then within this, I am going to say that we're going to return a text widget, then I'll take the heading text, I'll come back to the build UI function, to the column that's within the children's list of our column, and here I'm going to paste in the heading text like so, save and there we go we can see verification with this done the next thing that i'm going to be doing is on the main column i'm going to set the main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot space evenly and i'm going to set the cross axis alignment to be cross axis alignment dot center and save once this is done the next thing that i'm going to be doing is actually creating the other widget which is going to be displaying our subheading text. So our subheading text refers to enter the code sent to the number. So for that, I'll do this. I'll copy this function for heading text. I'll paste it once more, but this time I'm going to say that it's going to be called subheading text. And then the actual text widget that it returns is going to be just slightly different. It returns a different text, has some slightly different styling applied to it. And then I'll take it, come back after my heading text, paste that in save and there we go we can see it and finally we need to show our number so for the number it's going to be the same thing again i'll just copy and paste the actual function in just the function returns a text widget with a number within it and some styling applied to it and then after my subheading text i will do that and do command save 
So there we go. We now have the top part of the UI done. The only thing that I'd like to do is add some spacing within them. So for that, I'm going to add a size box between the heading and the subheading, and then a size box between the subheading and the number text. So with this, what we can do is move on to the next part. So for the next part, I'm not going to focus on the pin input for now. What I'll do is focus on the didn't get the code part. So we can just quickly add that and get that done with. So for that, it's going to be the following. What we are going to be doing is basically creating a function. And I'm going to say that this function is going to be called underscore recent code link. It returns a widget. And then within this, I'm going to say that again, I'm going to be returning a text widget. It has some styling applied to it. And then I'll take this recent code link and I'll come back and then I will come to the point where we have our build UI function. But this time we are not going to be adding the actual function to the column that we have within our children's list. We will add it as the second child within the main column that we have after the column that contains all of these headings and the number. So let's do save. And there we go. We can see it didn't get the code recent code. Then I'm going to come to my main.dart file and I'll just quickly change the color to blue um, because it's currently purple as the theme and that should fix the actual hyperlink color. And with that, we are actually ready to begin creating our pin input form. So to create the pin input form, I'm going to be doing the following. I, after my actual column and before my recent code link function, I'm going to add a new child within this children's list for my column. And I'm going to say that it's going to be called pin input form like so. And then I will come down and I'll go to the very bottom. And here I'm going to say that I will create a function returns a widget. It's going to be called pin input form. Doesn't take in any parameters and I'll open the actual function definition up. And then here for now, we are going to be doing the following, which is to just return a form widget. And the reason we're returning a form widget is for the fact that our pin input is similar to a text input field or any other input fields that we might use within Flutter. So it basically supports interacting with the form and a form can actually interact with it and perform validation logic on it, saving logic on it. So if you work with forms before in Flutter, basically the pin input supports all of the functionality like that a text input form field would support as well. So once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is to the child for this form saying that I'm going to be using a column. And the reason I'm using a column, and let me just define the children's list quickly, is because we have two things within the actual pin input form. We have the actual input field for the pin, and then we have this validate button that allows us to validate if what we've inputted is correct or not. So that's why we're using a column. So once I've defined the column, then what I'm going to be doing is adding the first child within this column. And what is the first child going to be? Well, it's going to be a pin input variable and this comes from the pin input package and as soon as I do this and do command save you can see that we can see the pin input package in action and I can type stuff within it but for now nothing else is going to happen because it doesn't have any validation logic built within it so what I am going to be doing now is basically building the validation logic within it first so to build the validation logic, the first thing that we have to do is attach a key to our form. And that way we can use that key to call a validate function on the form. And then for all of the fields that are contained within this form, it's automatically going to call the validate functions on them. And the pin input actually is able to interact with the form as well. So to do this, I will come to the top of my actual class. And then here I'm going to do the following, which is to actually create a variable it's going to be called global key of type form state form key and set it equal to a new instance of global key. And then the type is going to be called form state. There we go. So once this is done, I can do command save, take my form key, come back to where my actual form is. And then on this, I can say now that the key is going to be our form key. So with this, then I can just give a quick restart to my application to make sure that nothing's broken. And then from here, we can move on to the next part. So for the next part, what I'd like to do is basically create the button that we click on so that we can call the validation logic on our form. So how are we going to be doing that? Well, to do that, I'm going to, after my pin input, add a text button. And then I'm going to say that when it gets pressed, I want an empty function callback for now. And then the child for this is just going to be a text widget that basically says validate like so. And with this done, let's do save. And there we go, we can see validate. But now I click on validate, nothing happens. So the next thing that I'm going to be doing is that when I click on this button, I basically want to go to my form key and then do dot current state dot. And then from here I can do validate. There we go. 
So now with this done, if I click on validate, you can see that nothing's still happening. And the reason for that is because even though we've now linked a form key to our form, we've called the validate function on the form, our pin input doesn't define what happens when the validate function is called on the form. So now we need to define the actual validation logic. So for the validation logic, it's going to be pretty similar to if you work with text if input form fields or other form fields like that, that we have a validator function, it gets a value passed to it. And if our validation passes, we return null, otherwise we display whatever error there is. So in this case, I'm going to say return value dot is equals to valid pin. So if the value is equal to the valid pin, then we return null. Otherwise, we return a error message that says pin is incorrect. And that's pretty much all we have to do. So with this done, let's do save and let's test it out. And there we go. You can see that it says pin is incorrect. Now, if I go ahead and I type in a random pin, it says pin is incorrect. If I go ahead, type in the correct pin, then nothing happens. That means the pin was correct. So the next thing that I'd like to do is show you how you can get notified when the user inputs a pin that the pin was correct and then you can do whatever business logic you'd like to do. Well, for that on the pin input, we actually have a function callback, which is called on completed. And this basically is called when the actual pin gets input and the user completes the pin input. So I'm going to say that we're going to get the pin passed to us. And then I'm going to say that I'm just going to print and then I'm going to do success. And then I'm going to just print the pin here. And with this, let's do save. Let's come back. Let's do one, two, three, two. And there you go. You can see that nothing gets printed to the console. I can show you by increasing the size of the console as well because we inputted the wrong pin. Nothing gets printed to the console. But as soon as I input the correct pin, so let me do that, one, two, three, four. You can see that now, we are going to see that it's going to print success one, two, three, four here. But if I go ahead and type in something wrong, one, two, three, two, validate, validate doesn't work. And we can't see success being printed out as well. As you can see, there's no success being printed out in our actual console. So there we have it. Now we actually know how to use the callback function to then call whatever actual business logic we need to call when the actual form field has the correct input within it. The next thing that I'd like to do is basically define some of the decoration properties on this form field so that I can show you how you can customize it. Because right now it looks very nice to me, but one thing that stands out to me is that I would like the actual error text that we get to be centered. So how can we do that? Well, to define what happens or how the actual error text is built or error widget is built, we have a function called error builder and it basically get defines the function, the function gets in some parameters, it's usually the error text, I believe, and then the actual pin, and then we can basically return a widget here that is going to be used to display the error. So here I'm going to do the following, I'm going to say that I'm going to return a padding widget, and it's going to have some padding, and the padding is going to be edge insets dot symmetric, and then I'm going to do vertical 10.0, like so, and if I do save, you're going to see that the error disappears because we're just returning a padding widget. We're not returning anything else. So to fix that, I'm going to say that now it's going to have a child. The child is going to be a center widget. The center widget is going to have another child. The child will be a text widget. And the text widget is going to have the error text within it, like so. And if there's no error text because this can be a null value, then we'll basically default to using an empty string. And with this, that's pretty much it. So let's do save. And there we go. We can see pin is incorrect. What I'd like to do is change the actual color for this text to be red. So I'll update the styling. And there we go. Now it says pin is incorrect. And if you put in the correct pin, for example, four, validate, there we go. It looks good. So with that, that's pretty much all we have to do in terms of creating the actual OTP verification screen in Flutter. There is a lot more that you can do with this packet, such as customizing the package to fit your own needs. And for that, what I'll recommend is actually going to the pub.dev page for this package and then basically taking a look at the examples that they've built and how you can modify the actual pin input to your liking. But if you just want a pin input screen for your application that looks great, um, is completely responsive, then a link to the source code for this application as well as the resources that I mentioned within this video is going to be down in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it if you are confused at any point. And with that, I hope that you learned a thing or two about how to build a OTP verification screen in Flutter. 
using the pin and package that I've shown you today. So stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.